god. Oh my god. Oh my god. My Saturday was unreal. <laughs> you want to talk about some fake racing? Oh, 12 hours of Sebring followed by like 150 or 250 or 225 or I think it was 225. 225 laps at Bristol. Um, Sebring started at 8 in the morning uh, and the server opens for the USRL Cup Series at 9.15 so with <laughs> practice and whatnot, we got green flag for Sebring around 8.45 we finished, I finished the race out at Sebring race ended at about 8.45 I had 30 minutes to collect my thoughts before I had to switch into driving an Xfinity car at Bristol for like over 200 laps that race ended up sucking, so <laughs> for me at least. Uh, but you know, how'd you guys do in the Sebring? P four, P four. We had some really green drivers in the car too, so it really was like the fact that we finished P four is amazing. They like, know who Joey they are. Did... Oh, okay. You're just... <laughs> no, no, jo- Joey. Jo- I mean, Joey will be the first to admit he's a green driver, and Joey also like. I don't know. Maybe like if we do it again, I'll have to like go to Joey's house and like smack him or something, mm. so we can get a little bit fired up. Because there were a couple times where I could just tell is because he didn't have confidence in himself because he was running fine. Like his lap times weren't really that far off of like our fast lap times yeah. like, in the group, but he just wouldn't pass GT cars, and we were in a P two, and so like he 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 spent multiple laps behind like the same GT cars, and it's like a ten second difference in pace. <laughs> I'm like Joey just. I like well, I didn't say this during the race. I didn't want to mess him up because like obviously he's he's a little sketched out, right? Like he's not he he bought the P two for that event, mm-hmm. so he's like not confident at all. So I'm not gonna like push him to go, go out of his comfort zone, but also pass the GT car. Like get around him. <laughs> it was it was only because he didn't have the confidence to do it, which fair enough, respect. But um, he still did great. He did not bend the car at all. It was totally fine. We had to race in the rain. It was the first iRacing special event with rain, and it was really cool. Um, I started the race as well as finishing, and so I'm doing my qualifying laps, and as I'm qualifying, Antonio's looking at the radar in iRacing, and he's like, um, I see green. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, great. That's really good to know. And so like, as the set, as the qualifying session's kind of ending, you can see on the, like, the replay cameras it's raining more and more. And then it's like, okay, time to grid. We get on the grid, and it's raining pretty hard. And then we start moving down the backstretch, and it is pouring. And then we kind of get to, like, pace speed in the in the final corner and can't see a thing. Can't see a thing. Just get the green flag. Can't see a thing. Whole first lap. Can't see a thing. Cannot see a thing. It was pouring rain in the first probably 30 minutes of that race. And then um, it was drying track all the way through, and then it rained again in the middle. Um, so kudos to iRacing. That was really cool. That was a lot of fun. I, I'm excited for that to be like a regular staple fixture in all those events. But uh, yeah, P4. Anyway, for primetime racing um, with green drivers in the car and not a lot of seat time between everybody. So we'll take it all day. Um, it was fun. And uh, the doubleheader part of it was cool where I got to run an oval race after that. It was cool. Um, do I want to do it again? No. <laughs> I'm 26 years old. Um, I, I like need to like... I need to like recharge after shit like that. Like, I can't do that. I can't do that anymore. I'm not young. I'm not young. Yeah. I'm like regular yeah. age. I'm like a regular aged adult. I can't just like, I can't play racing simulators for like 18 hours a day. I can't. Mm. Oh my God. It was a lot, oh. but it was fun. Nice. Yeah. I did absolutely nothing this weekend. So, Okay. Sometimes you got stupid. That's okay. Yeah. Hey. It rained on Saturday, so I didn't make it out to the track. So mm. there you go. Hey. Sometimes it's okay to do absolutely nothing. Like yeah. certain things that we'll talk about tonight. Um <laughs> folks this <Hi>, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> folks, this is Fake Racers Podcast. Uh I'm Joe. That was Davey giving his Sebring. Matthew down below who got his weekend ruined by the rain or at least delayed or Mm-hmm. Maybe not ruin. Ruin might not be the right word, but yeah, one of them changed. How about that? Changed by the rain. Yeah. Um, back with this week's edition of the Fake Racers Podcast. We can't thank you enough for watching, listening. However you support us, make sure you click the like button if you're watching. Uh, share the videos. Follow at Fake Racers on Twitter, and uh, make sure you're subscribed to Track and Turf over here on YouTube. 
um, track and turf. The turf is coming. Turf. <laughs> the turf is coming. The turf track is, is coming. here. The track is here. Just gotta, just gotta do more stuff. Just gotta do more stuff. Just gotta do we more stuff. we gotta, we gotta yeah. Do. It was a long week last week. Let me tell you. It it was a long was week. And, like, yes. It was a long week. I think yes. I I worked I worked like fifty hours at the day job probably, and that was with leaving at like one thirty on Friday. Um. So yeah, fun week. Yeah, I'm also like suddenly getting busier too. So it's like, oh great. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right when we wanted, to right when we wanted to, exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is good timing. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. All right, let's get right into it because William Byron just absolutely blew the field away from Coda yeah. NASCAR Cup race qualified on poles the first time in 13 career pole starts that he won the race from the pole. Um, they made a little bit of that. It, I felt like the coverage of this race wasn't on par with the rest of Fox's coverage for the year. I don't know if I have a feeling that's just because it's a road course, but um, mm-hmm. I definitely found myself very bored during the race. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, I don't know if you felt the same way, but Byron dominates and gets his second one of the year. I think that's a symptom of who dominated the race. <laughs> <laughs> William Byron's really falling into that like Martin Truex category of drivers. If the car is good, he's going to win. If it's not as good, he's probably not going to win. That's what I wanted to ask you, if that's what you meant by that. Look, so. I, I think it's getting there. I think it's getting there. I've had this, and Matthew, chime in, but I don't want to like over go. No, but, um, I've had this conversation with people, but I feel like William Byron's in, like, we talk about A and B and C and D cars and whatnot at organizations. I feel like William Byron's in that eight car for Hendrick right now. It feels like they have the best stuff. I feel like you can put Kyle Larson in your B car and he can get it to A status. Um, Mm -hmm. Alex Bowman drove to another top five at Coda. He continues his streak there. He's really underrated as a road course racer, it feels like, especially there. Um, And then Chase Elliott, it feels like Chase is struggling. Um, I think he finished around Larson, but Larson at one point got spun. We'll talk about that in a moment, but... Um, feels like Byron is solidified as the A driver at Hendrick right now. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, I think. So, um, yeah, it, it surprised me when they said the stat that he's won the most next-gen races. I thought for sure it would have been Larson or Hamlin. Um, Wait, really? Has, mm-hmm, I believe that was win number 10 for him. That's weird. Yeah. It's Which not it's a- Larson or Hamlin. I'm going to look right now, but yeah, he's got 10 wins over the last three, well, counting this year as a season. Yeah. Three seasons. Yeah. Uh, and I believe Larson is, I think Larson was tied with him coming into this year. I'm That's really that up surprising. Real quick. But they did, they did say that on the broadcast. Yeah. Wow. But I mean, that goes to show what you were talking about that like he, he wins in very like unassuming ways that it just kind of sneaks up on you. Like three years in a row, he's the first driver to win multiple races in a season like what? It, it's kind of yeah it sneaks up on you that like byron has been like the dominant guy <laughs> which it's huh. really funny to think about that stat because byron's second win in 2022 was Watkins Glen, or no sorry that's larson i'm reading that wrong but still like it it, it just sneaks up on you that like this guy has been very low-key dominant and it was i think we talked about it last year joe where you knew somebody who said that he was like mediocre and it was like are you watching the races Mm -hmm. he's (laughs) always up front yeah Yeah. that same person is the person i'm talking about that i'm talking with about byron being in the a car and larson in the b car uh larson has (laughs) my roommate next gen wins so (laughs) that's crazy i really didn't Uh, denny's probably at like seven I'm gonna look. Yeah, I'm looking at Denny's, Denny's right at now. seven, seven or eight. Wow, that's uh, Denny's on six. Oh, okay. I was not right at all. I went the yeah. wrong way. I mean, still. Yeah. I mean, he did. Pro- he did have one taken away from him. Did I, would that? Count, yeah. Or would yeah, that... it would be one taken away. Oh, that yeah. would be seven then. Yeah. No, but it was taken away. It doesn't count. Oh, uh, I, I wasn't counting it when. It... Yeah. 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 If yeah. that one doesn't get. Davey's taken away. trying to make me feel better. Is what it is. Well, I'm I mean, not gonna I allow it. Remember, I remember winning more than six races, so that's probably what. It is. <laughs> yeah. Either way, William Byron uh, putting on a clinic at HMS. Um, yeah. You know, part of me wonders too, because it always kind of seems like there's two Hendrick cars that are kind of the A car. Yeah. And I still feel like that's Kyle Larson. Yeah. I just feel like 
I just feel yeah. like they're not putting together races like they used to. So because they they haven't completely missed. I mean, some weekends, yes. That, I mean, that just happens. William Byron was terrible in Martinsville last year, um, but uh, like. I feel like they're just as strong pace wise. It's just William Byron and, and, and Rudy Fugel. They are finishing out races. I mean, they're putting together the whole entire package every week. I think the argument comes from, and you alluded it, alluded to it. They're saying Byron's falling into that true X category of if he's got the mm-hmm. best car, he's going to win the race. Um, yeah. We know Larson can win when he doesn't have the best car. I don't know if we feel a hundred percent confident in that with William Byron just yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's where it comes from saying maybe Larson's the B car, like air quotes. It's not necessarily like a A B C. It could be like a one A one B, but he's still the second yeah. guy on the totem pole when it comes to like what it feels like resource wise. You yeah, know, yeah. and a lot. I, I think people get get confused with that too. A lot of times that um, it's just about like the money that teams are putting into it and like the the, manu- the engineering and all that. I think it also comes down to your crew chief. I feel like Rudy, like you said, Rudy Fugel has been on it. Cliff Daniels is obviously always on it. Um, and then you, you go to Chase and you go to Bowman. It feels like Bowman, in some respect, is they're a little bit more on it right now. And Alan Gustafson is that Chase, Chase fans have always unjustly criticized Alan Gustafson, but now it feels like that mm-hmm. noise is becoming more and more credible. Yeah. Um, especially because they qualified inside the top ten and they finished eighteenth. Or 16th, something like that in this race. 16th, I believe, yeah. Um, which feels more competitive than it ever has been, but still, you're, he's your 2020 champion. He won five races the first year with this car and all that. But Yeah. Um, Chase has I think one like, top 10 this year, yeah. Damn. And, mm-hmm. like, every yeah. other finish has been between 12th and 19th, so they're just kind of, like, consistently right in the middle. <laughs> which doesn't feel like what they should be doing right like i think that's that's i don't think i don't know if it's time to press the alarm but once we get through once we get to talladega and if they're still in that boat i feel like that's where you start because that's about the third of the way through the regular season i think yeah yeah Um, and i would imagine if they're finishing there a lot they're like their current points position probably puts them like on the bubble come um darlington for the final regular season race you know Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not yeah. where that team needs to be at no. all on a regular season. And they need to win a race this year. They do. So yep. <laughs> sooner rather than later. Mentioned Kyle Larson. I think he finished 17th or 18th. He finished back there, back half of the top 20. But um, he was spun by Christopher Bell. Kyle Busch was also spun by Christopher Bell. Yep. To which Kyle Busch went right to Christopher Bell after the race, got in his face, told him, he asked did. him what did he ask have i ever wrecked you no no all right one's coming <laughs> and then walked away <laughs> <laughs> which not gonna lie kind of baller yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of baller. <laughs> not gonna lie to you <laughs> I, um, I love that kyle just constantly finds new like one-liners <laughs> to throw yeah. at people. <laughs> he's always got something new and i love it <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we should not have let him calm down. I'm glad he's back. Like, <laughs> it's like it's like like those horrible like half jokes you make about artists that you like, and like they made music maybe when they were in a dark place and it was really good, and they got better mentally. But like you kind of don't like their music now. It's like man, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I love Kyle Busch being in that dark place at RCR a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably terrible for his mental health, but I kind of like I'm glad that yeah. he's angry. Well, we've talked about RCR's struggles this year so far, right? And I think that's kind of maybe what's uh, what's pushing him back to the dark side, if you would. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, yes. I, listen, we need more rivalries. I think it's good, too, because obviously Kyle and uh, Chris Rebelli are teammates while well, Kyle was still at JGR for a couple of years there and, I mean, and the like. Kyle was his owner in the truck series. There's not going to yeah. be a rivalry. Did you see Chris Rebelli's face when he walked up? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't tell oh if Chris gosh. Ravel was going to cry, shit his pants, <laughs> or cry because he shit his pants. Like, He's just... We've talked about drivers not having personalities. I think Chris Ravel's just, like, a dude. Like, he's yeah. just a guy, right? He doesn't know how to react to that. Yeah. It's not, in, like, his, it's not, like, in his code. It's not, yeah, it's not his database <laughs> in his head. <laughs> it it reminded me... 
It reminded me of something that happened in Moto earlier this year where Jet Lawrence, as a rookie, like had a little scuffle with Jason Anderson and like his guys immediately afterwards were like, Jason Anderson is the last person you want to screw with, Jet, so we're going to make <laughs> sure that you make it very clear that you're sorry and you don't want this to go any further because he will make our lives hell. And that's <laughs> kind of the same thing I feel like that the JGR guys are like, like let's not poke the bear <laughs> because Kyle Busch is the last person we want to beef with. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to Richmond this upcoming weekend, so watch out for that one. Um, and then oh, Martinsville baby. the week thereafter. So <laughs> Oh, baby. <laughs> Um, mention again. We mentioned Kyle Larson. Let's mention Hendrick winning their first Xfinity Series race since like two thousand something, two thousand five, oh nine, oh nine. Okay, yeah. Well, still, yeah, crazy. still crazy. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, but also, they haven't entered a lot of Xfinity races. I think a lot of people have that. What is it, Mandela effect? That uh, they had won a race since then because of the eighty eight car that they were running with yeah. the HendrickCars dot com. Um, yeah, yeah. But they're not doing I as much. Swore the 17 won a race last year i don't know why i could have swore it had 17 was winless winless uh, this weekend um crazy so kyle larson won uh kudos to them on pitting there with uh, the second to last caution to take four tires i was i saw them (laughs) when they pit i was like oh yeah that second caution saved them well yeah 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 yeah. but still um let's talk about that last restart though because oh man Going down into turn uh, one, SVG's got the lead. And, um, you know, he breaks for the corner. Well, we can talk about if he bro- broke early or not, but um, gets shoved all the way out out by uh, Austin Hill. Austin Hill squeaks by. Is It was pretty obvious he was holding him up, that Gisbergen was faster, I thought. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You yeah. know, just because just you're not on somebody's bumper doesn't mean that you're not, you don't have more pace than them. It's a lot of, like, you know what I mean? It felt like he was being too patient in that situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but SVG wrote right around there in second for a lap or so, then decided to just absolutely hit the crap out of Austin <laughs> Hill. That gave Kyle Larson enough time to catch up, get by both of them. Um, coming back to the line, they were side by side racing for second. Um, there's, there's a photo out there from somebody in the stands of Austin Hill trying to right hook the heck out of the 97 car. Um, don't know if you guys saw that, but uh, I caught it while I was watching the race. I was like, yeah, I why is he tell. turning left there? Um, so, didn't like that. And then the post-race comments were freaking hilarious. I mean, yeah. it, it just... Uh, I felt like Austin... I was waiting for Austin Hill to start crying, honestly. Um, you had him talking about... What did he say? He called the colleague guys a bunch of sissies on the radio or something. Yeah, and then his... Yeah. What did his spotter say back to him? Like... <laughs> Basically, it was like, no, I think that was fair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what you're on about, man. Um, so that was funny. And uh, I don't know. I want to get you guys' thoughts. I I feel like I took you through everything. You know, Austin Hill like was pouting about it after the race. SVG was just all smiles about it after the race. But See, That's <laughs> the one thing I disagree with. It. That's the one thing I disagree with. I think, I think inside, like... Like yeah, he was. Well, yeah, 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 and he has been, but like you could kind of like tell, like in his eyes, like he was, he was fuming, like yeah, he yeah. was so mad, he was so angry, like you could tell, and like I, I think he was just trying to do it the right way, which is why he was getting held up because he, he was just faster in all the parts where you couldn't really pass, like all the really technical areas where there's not like a lot of room, and he wasn't trying to barge him out of the way like he did to him. And then by the time he was like, oh, maybe I should barge him out of the way, wasn't the right corner, wasn't no. the right situation, no. obviously, no. to let Larson get by. But you could tell Shane Van Gisberger was fuming after that race. He was pissed. He's, he puts on a good smile, and he's he's been in good spirits, and he's been like – he's had a really good attitude since coming to, um, coming to like NASCAR full-time, basically. But <laughs> I could tell this is one where he like put on the smile and gave a really good interview, but – he, there's there was Not no happy. way he wasn't yes yeah. I, I think he was sending a message too because a lot of people pointed out that coming into this year he was saying that he was like i don't want to use the bumper that's not how i want to race and then austin hill was like fine i'm just gonna absolutely use you up and he's like just because i don't want to use the bumper doesn't mean i'm not gonna do it right yeah we haven't <laughs> seen like like these people very clearly have not watched any supercars racing no. in the past <laughs> decade because um 
Shane, like, he's just being nice right now because he's new. Like, when he gets yeah. comfortable, it's really not going to be that way anymore. Like, <laughs> Shane Van Gisbergen is a people, bad man. I don't think people is, understand that. Yeah, you do not want to mess with him. Late yeah. stage Van Gisbergen is going to ruin some people's lives later the, this year. The thing that's been impressive with him so far is he's had good results on the ovals, too. Yeah. Right? Like, yes. I, top 15, top 10, top 20s, I think, are for, for this first third of the year and are... never driven on them. Exactly. Um, especially when you look back at how he did at IRP or last year, the truck race, and how much he struggled with that. I, think um, he still, I thought he still pulled out like a solid finish out of that, too, though. Yeah, I mean, he got better throughout the race, and that's yeah, what you want to yes. see. You want to see him continue to get better. Right now, that's all you're worried about is growth. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like when you're in high school. Maybe you don't do so good freshman year, but colleges are looking to see, hey, you got a C freshman year, you got a B sophomore year, you got an A junior year. Keep it up. Um, yeah. So, it curious to watch that. He got a 30-second penalty at the end of the race, too, for cutting the course, yeah. which... So Lame. We can talk about that. I, I, they have a camera, I guess, that watches it that F1 uses. I don't like F1, so stop doing that. <laughs> um, <laughs> go back and rewatch our 2021 Indianapolis Roval. Yeah, right. Big one where we talked about how stupid the corner cutting penalties are. Like, if you're going to become a more road course heavy s- series, you need to have road course rules that make sense. Yep. And yep. a 30 second penalty for cutting a corner by inches is ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, it's really harsh. So, um, so it kind of spoiled a good race that he had going, um, or a good result at least. Again, Kyle Larson got the win. Mm-hmm. Austin Hill ends up being second. Um, again, no one's I... talking about him trying to right rear him, but whatever. Um, yeah, I do, I do want to talk a more a little bit about that because like I know it's funny, but the fact that his spotter immediately was like, I don't know what you're complaining about, man. That that kind of sends a message that I was like, are they getting sick of him complaining on the radio all the time? Because it totally. feels like after every single race, it seems like there is a tweet with a, a radio transcript of Austin Hill being like this freaking guy. It was like maybe oh, you're man. the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I've been fully like neutral on Austin Hill just because like. I think yeah. he whines a lot, but he does make a lot of people mad who, like, sometimes aren't always mad at him for real reasons. And so, like, it's a good balance for me. But this weekend tipped too far the other way. He was being yeah. very annoying. And it was very it was, whiny. It was, yeah, it was like you very, very clearly tried to just ship Van Gisbergen into the gravel. And then you were somehow surprised that he came back and did the same thing to you. Like, exactly. I know all race car drivers are hypocrites, but, like, how did you not see that coming? Right. <laughs> you know? How are you it's, not it's, prepared? It's, it is exactly what we said, uh, and it was funny too because the the fin- the last lap was a an exact replay of the fir- of uh, the twenty twenty two race when Ross and AJ were punting each other out of the way, and yeah. Bowman did the exact same thing that Larson did. Um, it it was the same thing I was saying there, where it's like, if you're gonna shove him, you better know that it's coming back because it's Ross Chastain, and like you very clearly don't know Shane Van Gisbergen well because yes, he did say that he doesn't want to use people up but that doesn't mean you could just run all over it, right? Right. And nobody's going to feel bad for you when somebody dishes it back to you. Your own team didn't even feel bad for you, dude. <laughs> that was mm-hmm. the crazy part. They like they yeah. didn't even support his ass. They were just like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, oh, my God. Corey Hyam won the Truck Series race. Just wanted to mention it. Um, sure. He still should have been suspended for Daytona, though. Um, <laughs> we got to talk about... With Marco, <laughs> <laughs> I was listening on the radio and they were talking about the rear, that. the rear axle just falling out, and I'm like, "What do they mean by that?" And then I saw the freaking picture, and I'm like, "What?" Literally just fell out. Like I thought when I first saw, because I wasn't, I didn't have the race pulled up at the moment, yeah. and I just saw like a screen grab of the whole rear axle housing, and I was like, "Oh, someone just yard sailed." And then I saw the video, and it literally just fell fell off. out. <laughs> <laughs> he literally. He literally outran it. Like, it came out yeah. behind the truck. <laughs> he was running away from it. Like, the only other insane. thing the only other thing I could think of that was like that was that time that Sebastian Buemi had both of his front wheels blow off under braking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic clip. It was just like, how does that even happen? <laughs> Such a classic clip. Yeah. Honestly, it was amazing. I, I could not believe what I was seeing. I was in the middle of the Sebring race uh, trying to explain to Darren, like, 
what I was seeing. <laughs> it's so hard to explain that. The rear end of the car fell off. And he's like, the rear... The... Fell? <laughs> <laughs> it reminds... Have you guys ever seen the Clark and Daw sketch, The Front Fell Off, where they're talking about the like oil freighter and they were like... Hey, can we talk about that oil spin? He's like, yeah, the, the one that the front fell off of? And he's like, yeah, what happened? He's like, well, the front fell off. He's like, well, don't they build them to the so the fronts don't fall off? And he's like, well, this one clearly didn't. Well, how do you know? Because the front fell off. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, uh, I, mean, I don't think anything else happened in the truck notable race. Notable things no, that happened nothing in the else truck, happened in the yeah. truck race. Nothing really happened at Coda all weekend, it felt like. Um, yeah. But NASCAR's going back there, supposedly, next year. Do we... Do we I mean, do we agree they're, with that? They're, we... they're just waiting for Bowman to finally win there, and then they're like, all right, we can stop going. Here. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's so close. He's um, getting close. <laughs> We're getting Dale, Dale Jr. brought up the idea of maybe taking the Xfinity race to Wilkesboro um, and moving it. I I kind of like that idea. Um, I don't hate it. I, I still think Cup should go to Coda. Oh, yeah. Cup and Truck can go to Coda. This is the only truck race on the road course, too. You got to have two. You have to have two. That's the problem. You can't Bring have Trans Am or IMSA. Yeah, I don't. Uh, you could do something else. I just always worry about different rubber down on the track. You know. Oh, shut up! <laughs> shut up! Listen, man. Shut up! You sound like a whiny crew chief. You gotta think about those things. You sound like a no. You don't. Yeah, you do. Because guess what? Deal with it. That's well, yeah, job. everyone's gotta deal That's with it. Job. I'm just That's saying. Their job. That's their job. They're getting paid millions of dollars. It's their job. I mean, they're probably getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. Let's not say millions. I'm, sh- I'm, I'm sure it's some of them are getting paid pretty handsomely. <laughs> some of them, not all of them. I mean, hundred thousand dollars turned into a million after ten. So, <laughs> I'm just saying they're getting paid. Good lord, sorry, everything fell from the <laughs> shop. <laughs> More than enough. Money. Uh, we're gonna, do I have? Um... That's close enough. I couldn't find the pipe. That's not the wrong <laughs> I'm just going to scare the shit out of the listeners. <laughs> Let's go from the shop. Um, the Thermal Club $1 million challenge. That was the worst thing I have ever watched. I, I watched the first heat, saw the wreck on lap one, said, all right, I'll stick here for these 10 laps. Um, I wish I didn't. I didn't watch the rest of it because it was not entertaining at all whatsoever. Um, it was a $1 million purse combined, not to the winner, like they advertised. <laughs> well, yeah, they couldn't come They up couldn't with get the money. the money. Oh, my God. They couldn't come up with the money. So teams took a massive <sighs> loss on this event, um, especially the ones that wrecked their race cars. Looking at you, Romain. Um, or Roman or whatever. Um, Grosjean. You know, NBC was pretty much, it was just a commercial for the Thermal Club that 99% yep. of people watching couldn't afford, and the other 1% are already there. Um, the ticket refund thing, I, I forget if we talked about that on here, but $2,000 tickets to 500 they had to refund everyone. Teams were not happy at all with their service. We got reports of teams being carried away by armed guards. Um, first, I bet it was I bet it was Chip on the scooter. First, let's just not go back. <laughs> let's just not go back, okay? It it's fine. If you want to test there, okay do your testing there. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. second off, let's not have a month and a half gap between our first and second race of the year. Let's just not do that. Two weeks. Two weeks should be your maximum gap in your schedule. This is. I agree with everything you're saying, and these are all things that need to be addressed. But we're like totally skipping over how devoid of soul, devoid of excitement, devoid of atmosphere that entire event was. It was just a waste in every manner of description. It was like just soul sucking, like boring no one cared doesn't look like anyone wanted to be there and it was a sham no one cared no one cared no one cared they tried to brand this as an all-star race and no one cared what is what what exactly was the point were we were were we actually trying something here was this a thing that we were actually trying because i was ready to give indycar props for actually trying but 
I'm going to be honest. The more I think about it, the more I think they didn't try. Because it doesn't feel like it. It was dead. It was, like, lifeless. The entire event, TV broadcast, looks like at the track, everything just dead. So, uh, just like a, just to draw a quick comparison to, so, like, the NASCAR All-Star Race, uh, it's, it's in Charlotte, right? Or it's in North Wilkesboro, which is right in the heart of NASCAR. It's where everybody is, right? It's why Texas didn't work as the All-Star Race. Uh, Thermal Club is in Thermal, California, an unincorporated community within the Coachella Valley. It's not even an actual place on the map. And you were like, I, people don't even know what the hell the Thermal Club is. And you're going to host your all-star race there? Like, what are we doing? It's just insanity. It, it's, it's, like, I've, for years I've always thought that it's like IndyCar's race control always finds ways to do the wrong thing. And now it's like Roger Penske. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're like, what if we did the same but, like, business-wise? What if we just made every wrong, bad choice that we could do? So, like, I, I don't like the idea of just being completely down and out on a race before it even happened. Like, I wanted to be open-minded about this, but it was just a complete waste of time and money for everybody mm-hmm. involved. I don't, it, it's just pointless. I don't get it. Um, yeah, I, I feel like it was a way that they were trying to rationalize having some more testing out there. Um, it didn't rationalize that testing at all. Um, yeah. because they, you know, they, they had sessions i think starting thursday or friday last week um for this event and uh yeah i don't know it just indycar has such an image crisis right now you know the rumblings that one of your manufacturers is just gonna leave um because you haven't been able to implement your hybrid powertrain that they are ready for um you have half the teams, they just don't even know why they're competing here. You have drivers openly criticizing your all-star race for the <laughs> sham that it was. You have drivers that the only way they get any recognition is through their own work, and honestly, they need a little bit of help. Um, you're a series that could really, really benefit from going to South America or Mexico, um, and you won't do it. Although I think the there are rumblings about them going back to Brazil, Ooh, maybe. Um, that would be awesome. The old Sao Paulo race used to be so good. Mm-hmm. And that one, that one street race was always good too. Yeah. So. It was, but. But it might be the same one. I don't know. <laughs> you you had such a good opportunity here to gain momentum was, yeah. from disillusioned F one fans in America, and you've just scuttled all that opportunity at this point. You know, look at the look at the disaster that the Nashville GP is this year. Because yeah, it's cool that they're going back to the super speedway and they're racing on an oval because they don't do enough of that. But teams are already upset that they paid all this money to be in downtown Nashville, and now they're Sponsors out in the boonies. Pissed. Sponsors are pissed. I mean, what do yeah. what do they expect? A lot of fans are really happy about it, and I like I get it. It's cool to be back in Nashville super speedway, but. That's not the point of going to Nashville. That's ruining the point. There's there's sponsors that care about being seen by that many eyes. I had a pretty bad time at the Nashville GP when I went. I mean, it was fine. It was good. But, like, I wouldn't do it again. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I will say is it was packed out. And people cared. And it was an event. Like, everyone was... Everyone was... It was a buzz. And Mm -hmm. this was kind of, like, at the height of, like, IndyCar's potential, too. And then... Um, you know, you, you take IndyCar to the Super Speedway because of construction and all this stuff. And it's like, well, we're losing so much of the reason going to Nashville is special. Which, why the and hell did bring... you not figure that out before you announced the race in the first place? I don't know, because yeah. the renovations yep. to Nissan Stadium have been long in the books. Um, That's why I think it might be something else. I, 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 I would assume it's, it's something else, but you know. <laughs> But, but convenient like, excuses and all. <laughs> but like you look at like you look at the season and and you know your our little um our note and our from the shop uh show sheet is perfect how Thermal Club exemplifies all the problems with IndyCar because IndyCar doesn't know what it wants to be and it 
certainly did not know what they wanted this Thermal Club Million thing to be because they branded it as this made-for-TV event, which is why they made ticket prices so high. And it wasn't made-for-TV. And it wasn't made-for-TV. It was essentially the two heat races were nothing burgers. It was a 10-lap segment with a 10-minute break where nothing happened, apparently. It was just a 10-minute break. It's like, okay, everyone stop. And then everyone stopped, and they were like, what the... Okay, what do we do We now? disqualified one car because they didn't put enough fuel in it. Don't get me started. <laughs> um, and they, like, okay, they just wait. They got out of the cars and looked around at each other and put their finger up their ass and then got back in the car for the rest of the race, which, believe it or not, wasn't exciting either. Like, what was the... I, I, I don't know how many times I have to ask what's the point. I, I'm going to stop because I know I sound like a broken record. It's an identity but, crisis at the end of the day. Um, has, I had no idea. This is, there was no <laughs> pomp and circumstance to this event that they kept branding as their all-star they, race, their big exhibition. To pure motorsports enthusiasts, they have the most important race on the schedule, right? Mm-hmm. On the racing calendar as a whole worldwide, the Indianapolis 500. You can make arguments about Le Mans. You can make arguments about the 500 Monaco, the the Daytona 500. You can put the Indianapolis 500 is that marquee event, and it shows each and every year when it can be smack dab in the middle of the schedule, and it has this huge ratings boom. The fact that they have not been able to capitalize on that in any substantial way. Um, you know, attendance is not good. Uh, I talked about this last year. The Detroit GP that is in the heart of downtown Detroit whatever make your detroit jokes here insert them it doesn't cost anything to go to that you can go for free that's not a winning business proposition you know what i'm saying like yeah. you can twist it and say this is so we can get as many people to the racetrack but really what it is it's so we can make it look like we have a lot of people at the racetrack mm-hmm. um it's just it's so it's so frustrating. It's so aggravating. It's it's all these things because it's a it's a racing series at the end of the day that is the closest to pure racing that we have. Yet they don't want to capitalize on that. They want to be made for TV. They want to have a, a charter agreement. They want to do all these things that just don't that spit in the face of what people want them to be. And you know, that's that, that's the frustrating part, especially when you have a racer like Roger Penske or supposedly um, letting his business brain take over. Yeah, yeah. And this is, I mean, we talked about this with IndyCar in the previous weeks this, uh, this year. Um, like, you know, things like the charter agreement. Like, all, like other things that aren't necessarily bad ideas, but IndyCar's too small to implement them right now. And so... Like, a lot of fans end up asking for, like, okay, well, can we take any measurable steps forward here? And that's apparently too much to ask for. Yep. Instead, let's do a, a meaningless race at Thermal Club where no one shows up, no one watches it. I'm terrified for the ratings to drop. <laughs> 200,000 people. I bet, I like, I, I hope I can find another, um, we talked about this earlier this season as well with, like, that sheet that I found of, like, all the motorsports in America, like, ranked ratings wise mm-hmm. i hope we get that again at the end of this year because i will the thermal club event is gonna be like horrific it's gonna be below like most drag racing broadcasts probably <laughs> and it's only gonna hurt them going forward in the viewership too right yeah. like what the next race is long beach in like a month or something? I don't know. Yeah, like a month. Uh, I've got it pulled up. Long Beach is on April 21st. A month? <laughs> a, month. a month from now. <laughs> Matt, your face when you said that said it all. <laughs> <laughs> God. For it's our not... audio listeners, it was very unimpressed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just... Oh, God. It, every time we talk about IndyCar, it just, like, baffles me, right? Like, a prime example of how you're talking about has, like, nobody knew what this was going to be. At the end of the race, they showed an updated point standings graphic after a non-championship event, which awarded zero points to anybody. (laughs) Very useful information, you guys. We have to make it look like this mattered. That's pretty much what that was. It's like, you you held a non-points race in the middle of the SoCal desert 
at an exclusive club for only billionaires to live at, and then you're somehow surprised that nobody watched or went to after drivers were talking about how they thought the track was unsafe when they were testing there, and then Colton Herta, who finished second, said, and I quote, I hope we don't come back here in his podium interview. Like it's it's just a it's a it's a court a crash course on how to do everything wrong with your motorsports series. It reminds me so much of F one in the late two thousands and early twenty tens when Herman Tilke was just let's design a new track in a country that we've never been to in the middle of nowhere that nobody shows up to and then we'll race there twice and then never go back there again and waste everybody's money. That's what this reminded me of. Like this the abandoned circuits this. in Korea and in India and Malaysia now, except mm-hmm. Malaysia was actually good. Um, Turkey, uh, I mean, the list goes on. So yep. just stupid. It's just a waste of money. Everybody lost. Yep. So. But those are millionaires' problems, and we're not millionaires. So what do we know? Yeah. Nothing, apparently. It's- Ty Dillon's running some races from college. He probably has a lot of money. That's probably how he's able to do it or find sponsorship. I don't know. We, that was the thing in the offseason <laughs> that Ty Dillon was going to be in the 16 full-time. He isn't, thankfully. Uh, but he'll be running five races. Uh, to all you Ty Dillon fans out there, rejoice. Now you won't have to watch him putz around in 20th in the truck series. You can watch him putz around in 30th in the cup series. Um, <laughs> some stank still, on that one. Still somehow gonna average out to have a same average finish as Daniel Hemrick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Especially with how bad it's going for the 31 team this year. <laughs> They're just having fun, man. Yeah. Um, They're just running purely off vibes at this point. Speaking of colleague, <laughs> one interesting thing to note, the 16 car was fully prepared by Trackhouse this past weekend, so when SVG's in the car, it'll be actually a Trackhouse car. Um, bet, bet colleague sells a charter here this year. You think? Yeah, yeah. Sells one. Or, it, I, mean, I was going to say, AJ did say that he only found out he was running this race like two weeks ago. So, Well, Ooh. he was probably happy he did because he finished top ten. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> um, All right, bottom split moments of the week. Matthew, what's your bottom split moment uh, of the week? Oh, God, what was my bottom split moment? I've already forgotten it. Uh, come back to me. <laughs> Davey, what was your boss for the moment of the week? I like how Joe never goes first. I went second. first last week. Um, yeah, because I made you. Did... Oh my god. Go. Oh man. I think my boss split moment was um doing <laughs> doing like eighteen hours of sim racing in one day. <laughs> That's fair. And how tired I was at the end. Um and like also like being so tired that like at the at like uh, for on the green flag for the last caution of of my uh of the USRL race I was like oh we don't have that much time left I guess I'll push now and we did have that much time left in the race and I was like the last twenty laps I was like oh man I wish I had a right front <laughs> 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 hey it is what it is I remembered mine so. Uh, my bottom split moment is uh, the entirety of the F1 community reacting to the fact that Williams uses Excel to track like their parts inventory is somehow <laughs> that's a dumb thing. How else are you supposed to keep track of things? Like, oh man, we use a free software rather than making our own from the ground up to keep track of how many parts well, we have. Excel isn't Why free. Is- well, whatever. It's it's a hell of a lot cheaper than coming up with your own thing. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> People are like, I can't believe they, they run an F1 team off of Excel spreadsheets. And I'm like, wait until you find out the entire global financial system is run off an Excel spreadsheet from 1994. Yeah, wait until you realize <laughs> that not every company builds their own CRM. And yeah. Like, like... <laughs> every single piece of software is held together with thumbtacks and popsicle sticks under the hood. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's so dumb. Why is that what we're dunking on them for? <laughs> so yeah. many other reasons to dunk on them. Yeah, like the fact that <laughs> they haven't won a race in 12 years, or... <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> so. um, Joe, what's your bottom split? My bottom split moment of the week... Oh, man, there's so many. So many. It was March Madness this week, so my bottom split... No. <laughs> okay, jerk. 
<laughs> um, my bottom split moment is going to go to... Uh, I really want it to be my road to pro moment, but I'll, I'll change my... I'll, I got a different road to pro moment. My bottom split moment is to Kentucky Wildcats for losing to the Oakland Grizzlies. Um, I don't know how you lost to the Oakland Grizzlies. Uh, Jack Golke got... Had, I think had 10 threes in the game. Made 10 threes. <laughs> 30 points. Oh, my God. From, from three-point shots. Um, Oakland was a 14. Kentucky was a three. So bottom split moment is to John Cal- Calipari and the Kentucky Wildcats for losing in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Um, Bro. Also, another bottom split moment to all the people that say that March Madness needs to be expanded to 128 teams. <clears throat> Shut up. No. Um, that would be objectively hilarious, though. I would love that. It would just... It would it would be too much. You Like, the whole first weekend would be just the first round of games. Good. Yeah. As a soccer fan who like likes uh, a domestic competition in England where it's literally every team all the way down to the lowest semi pro team all the way up to like the biggest European giant club <laughs> Manchester City and like sometimes Manchester City has to go play in someone's like backyard. Mm-hmm. I love that. That is amazing. <laughs> but part part of the NCAA tournament is it means something to make it. There's something to be said about the exclusivity once you up it. No? Okay, whatever. I don't know. See, that, that's lost on me. You lost me. You're going to have <laughs> to put enough. it in other terms. Because, like, for, 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 like, in soccer terms, it's like, oh, getting to the round of 16 or the quarterfinals it's, is a big deal. It's like making it into the Indianapolis 500 as, uh, you know, as a team that only shows up for that one race. I'm, I'm, right. just, I'm just looking so now. It's less and less until, you know. Number four seeded Auburn lost to number thirteen Yale. Yeah, one of the best athletic colleges in the school or in the country lost to a bunch of law students, bunch of nerds, a bunch of nerds. I lost some money on that. Let me tell you, (laughs) they they don't teach you this at Yali Medical School. (laughs) (laughs) The Yale's like it's like their biochemistry and whatever department (laughs) had like it's like Yale. Something that looked like college basketball or men's basketball, yeah. um, as their Twitter handle, and people kept tweeting at them, so they had to make a tweet that said, "Guys, we're not the college basketball team. You can follow them at." And then they're <laughs> at, <laughs> you had all the people click congratulating them and stuff. <laughs> um, oh, we move on to road to pro moments. My road to pro moment. It's going out to my little brother for kicking everyone's ass in pool on Saturday. Hell yeah. That was pretty funny. Um, we did not play for money, and I'm glad I didn't because, yeah, he kicked my butt. <laughs> Dude, my, my older brother and my dad are straight up like pool hustlers. <laughs> <laughs> like, if we ever go anywhere with a, with a pool table, they just, like, wipe the floor with people. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Matthew. Am I, oh, am I up <laughs> next? Uh, my road to pro moment. Uh, I wanted to just do all of 450 Supercross this week because it was freaking incredible. Um, but I want to focus pure specifically on Ken Roxon's weekend because it was stupid. Uh, he got sick on Friday and then drank a bunch of Dayquil and it made him more sick for some reason. So he was already feeling like garbage. And then in practice or qualifying session one on Saturday, crashed. Second qualifying session, never set a time. Had a terrible gate pick, crashed in his first moto, had to go to the last chance qualifier. First time in his career he's ever gone to an LCQ. From the very outside, hole shotted, won the LCQ, had a terrible gate choice on the very outside. While the monster girl was holding the 32nd board, the strap on his goggles broke. Luckily, one of the, I think it was one of the Oakley guys was still there and just had an extra pair for him real quick. And then he almost hole shotted the field into turn one and got a top five out of all of that. Jesus. most guys who come through the LCQ like finish like 15th and he was P2 in the first corner and still got a top five. <laughs> so it was absurd. <laughs> um, but if you have a chance, go watch Supercross this weekend from Seattle. It was incredible, especially the main event. So it was a good time. I won't spoil anything else. So That's awesome. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I had it tivo Now it's ruined. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, sorry you don't know that Ken Roxon's going to win, so... 
<laughs> Man. Anyway. Uh, oh, Davy, yeah. bro, problem. Um, mine's gonna be. <laughs> oh, Joe's gonna love it. Uh, oh no! I did my first ever March Madness t- uh, bracket. <laughs> Heck yeah! And it's going really well. Is it actually? Yeah, as well as it could be for a, a thing that I don't know anything about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Are you having fun at on. least? Is it making yeah, March Madness it, like kind of enjoyable? It, make, to... it does make it enjoyable to watch. Yeah, that yeah. was the main thing I want because like I feel like everyone basketball is probably like the coolest sport that isn't racing or soccer for me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, College football, but so... go ahead. Whatever. <laughs> oh, did I forget to say me personally at the end of that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Anyway, my bracket's going well. It's been it's kind of kept me invested. It's been made me, made me happy. Number you can also work, go on your uh, Hard Rock yes. Casino app, you know. And yeah, um, I was like, you know what? Everyone's underrated. Or everyone's like, everyone's overrated Florida too much to where they're underrated, in my opinion. So I've been on Florida to win their game, and that oh, fell yeah. apart at the end. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> so I don't have any money left in the Hard Rock app. No, <laughs> you lost <laughs> so, um, all your money. I mean, I only put 15 bucks in there to start with, and I oh, was God. up to 20 at one point, so it was pretty cool. <laughs> um, oh, man. But it's fine. And I'll also, like, everyone at Bristol, like, deciding to fuck themselves at the very end of that as well. That was pretty good. Justin Haley killing my bet. Well. Oh, yeah, that was... We totally forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, that too, this weekend. <laughs> Ran top 15 all weekend and then got DQ'd. Tell you, he's not doing half bad. No, they're, they're killing it right now. He's not doing half bad. Killing it. Killing you know it. You're killing it. Hmm? Okay. Cool. What? That's Fake Racer Podcast this week, folks. Sure is. Make sure you watch, listen, comment, say hello. It's Maverick Night in America tomorrow night over on JTN you can tune in <laughs> it's gonna be a fun time we're at phoenix ricky's on the call with me uh, the daytona race was really funny so <laughs> you should watch it dude i was watching that at, at the bowling alley and i was like i'm sorry it just happened also i don't know if you saw me uh drop into chat and just light a firebomb and then take off what do you i for, i did see it but what did you say <laughs> I, I did i did the thing from the the dumbest boy alive video where i was like hey all i worked out every other day for two weeks and worked out 10 times hope that helps and then just yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um God. watch maverick tomorrow night um it helps me to see you guys in chat talking with us um yeah. especially if things don't go well um, but had us all kidding aside, spectacular turnout last week. That's why we had so much pre-race coverage yeah. because there was knockout qualifying that took a little bit to get figured out, but got figured out. Um, yeah, I think they had, ended up seventy-seven people showed up. Holy, <laughs> oh um, my god! That's still like ten less than FTF had. An amazing, an amazing oh finish gosh. to that race too. Um, Oh, amazing! Incredible. Do you want to do you want to profile what happened, Davey? Because <laughs> I, I forgot to clip it. I need to clip it because it was like an all timer of a finish. Oh, I can't do it without being unbiased, but okay, I got there's... it. I got it. Then that's my job. Um, so Nick Gunther's leading off turn four. You, these names probably don't matter to most people listening to this, um, but maybe they do. Um, he's got his teammate. Is this therapy for you, Joe. Is it... this like you have to do this here because like, well, you've yeah. been holding it in? Yeah. Okay. You might have to rewind a lap. So oh, wait, yeah, let me rewind a lap. <laughs> this, yeah, Grant Wesley's leading the race. Or something. Grant <laughs> Wesley's leading the race, and coming up on lap traffic, lap car blocks the heck out of him. Is in the middle groove for some reason. <laughs> runs into the back of the lap car. Literally just yeets it to the outside wall and takes the leader with him. Yeah. Um. <laughs> cool. All right. Nick Gunther takes over the lead. Um. These guys were all really close on fuel, which we came to find out at through the end. We thought they were, and then, you know, we don't get confirmation on those things during the race. We kind of got a guess. Um, so he had a couple cars running out of fuel, so that the leader was running out of fuel coming off of turn four into the tri-oval. The car in second, that's his teammate. 
that's pushing him, makes a move to the outside, is also running out of fuel. The leader blocks his teammate. They both crash. The car in third place is out of fuel, coasting. <laughs> and the car in fourth, Matt Moss, um, in the 15, just drives by everyone, wins the race. Uh, $100 to him, a 3D printed trophy. That was kind of cool. Um, so Nick Gunther threw away $30 blocking his teammate. Um or hundred dollars, excuse me. Um, Michael Norman still finished second. He was the teammate that got blocked, and then uh, Keith Hughes ended up finishing third. So top three all got money. It was cool. That's kind of why I, the whole thing. But uh, that was probably one of the silliest things I've ever seen, and silly isn't the word I want to use. Um, <laughs> and after the race, we talked about it uh, a little bit. Uh, Nick said it was just kind of like reactionary, like first instinct but um yeah it was funny but i can't laugh right right? i because intrinsic intrinsically that was funny right yeah it just is but it sucks to know that guys lost money so um but also it was free to enter so did you really lose anything broadcast these races no it doesn't it was hilarious (laughs) i thought it was the funniest thing in the world the fact that there was money on the line even better. I got <laughs> harder because of it. Um, so I will make sure to post that clip over here on Track and Turf too, so that way for the folks that are only over here, they see it. Um, I'm gonna put a clip on Track and Turf later too. I have a really good view of what. Uh, I'll just give you guys a little preview, a little sneak preview. Um, oh, so, no. like I said, the Sebring race that I did started in the rain, full wet. Um, the first four cars all went straight off of turn one and slammed the wall. <laughs> two by two. Two by two all slammed uh, the outside wall. Like the 2018 roveled it. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Funniest thing I've ever seen. I, oh I didn't God. see it, obviously, like in the race because I couldn't see anything. But like watching the replay back, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was genuinely the entire top four. They just grouped together and just went straight off to the wall. <laughs> It caused a huge wreck. <laughs> oh my god! Good uh, times. Big Christmas podcast, everybody. <laughs> Man, okay, give give us a like or a rating or follow us on on uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. Track YouTube, and turf, Spotify, Google Podcasts, anywhere. Track and turf, uh, YouTube channel. That's a and, thing. And Twitter. There's, so there's there's a Twitter. I don't know how act. I mean, we we put most stuff on the Fake Racers Podcast Twitter at this point, but track and turf. When we get these other shows rolling, is going to be a good hub for all of it. So just be ready. Um, but I mean, yeah, make sure you tune into Maverick. Make sure you tune into all the JTM broadcasts this week. There's a stacked week coming up. Three of them week, next three uh, nights. Joe, Joe, well, Weaver, tonight. Dewey, and is Ricky commentating? Ricky's Ricky's doing Maverick this week. Ricky's doing Maverick this week. How about it? It will be a good time. Maybe we'll relive the clip of me calling a caution, Ricky just talking, and then him going, oh my gosh, there's a crash, after I called it like two minutes earlier. Um, <laughs> Ricky's, a, Ricky's a special egg. I love that, man. I love Ricky, man. I, I love doing races energy, with Ricky. The same energy of that clip uh, from like 2016, where they were talking about David Reagan wrecking in practice, and they show the replay, and DW's like, oh, they're wrecking again! <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Um so yeah, if you guys can give us some support, we always appreciate it. Can't thank you enough for it. Um uh, follow us on all the social media, links are posted down below. Um but yeah, that's this week's fake racers podcast. We will see you guys next week after Richmond. Bye.